Hey, I'm Tyler Edlin and welcome back to my channel. I'm a professional artist and illustrator and uh, today I'd like to just walk you through my process uh, for my first book cover that I completed uh, in 2019. I'm going to be going over a little bit about the brief, the initial email, how we've agreed upon our terms in regards to payments, I'll be showing you some sketches and how I planned out the cover, and then I'll just give a process overview. It's not like a thorough tutorial or anything, but if you're curious, maybe you'll find this interesting. So let's begin. All right, so what I have up on screen at this moment is the exact description that the author provided me. Now with that said, this cover is for an independent author. It is not for a publisher. And in my experience, you can typically expect or get about one half to one third the price for what a publisher is able to pay. I'm not gonna give out exact numbers, but just so you're aware. All right, so that's pretty descriptive. My initial thoughts and reactions on that is like, that's pretty heavy. There's a lot of elements to consider. Uh, the design itself, it's very easy to get lost and overcrowd this book cover. I like very simple book covers having a very simple and direct image that's very readable uh, is often what I go for in a scenario like this. So at this point, we did already agree upon a price. This was going to be a set price. Uh, I was gonna get half once I completed initial sketch and half the price when it was entirely complete. Some people like to go with royalty, so they'll take like a much lower cut on the cover and get back a certain percentage of the sales. And that is sometimes what I do work out with this guy. This is the second cover I've done from him. And I get a very small check quarterly because he's a very small time guy. Uh, so let's go in and look at the sketch I did based off this uh, description. So this is exactly what I provided the author. It's not glorious. It's not a beautiful sketch. It's a simple layout. I have worked with him before and he has a little bit of faith in me in that respect that I'll be able to see this through to completion. So I spent less time sketching. I don't have a lot of time for that so I try to get through the various stages as quickly as possible. So here's just this, the, the simple layout on the left and here's kind of his color kind of to grayscale sort of interpretation. I kind of actually have the, the child a, a bit facing away from. Uh, the flowers in this sketch that that fact simply eluded me um, and he's gonna be kneeling against you know the rubble and I might put a skull or so down there but there really wasn't a room or need to show all those destroyed and wrecked vehicles I think the layout and of the ruined buildings will kind of get that idea across so I sent it over he was very enthusiastic he was surprised I was able to take his big idea and simplify it to such a, a simple image and he's like yes go for it so at this stage, again, I sent an invoice to him through PayPal so we could pay half of it. So it, technically I did this sketch for free and I'll, I'll do that with clients because again, it's not a huge time commitment and I want to make sure I'll be able to realize their vision. So, you know, half the payment's done, I go in and I'm going to start the final at this. Uh, you know, given the amount of experience I have actually painting destroyed skyscrapers and stuff, it's not that much. There's plenty of reference out there for it, but I did have a free kit uh, from the Warzone 3D Kit Bash site that I made a quick mock-up in Cinema 4D, and that's going to serve as my uh, foundation in which I'm going to build the painting off of on top of there. Yeah, so uh, here is the 3D mock-up. It's not that much better looking than that ugly sketch I drew. Yeah, it is very ugly. But it, for me, really all it is is it serves as a reference so that I can kind of plan out lighting, uh, shadow, shapes, and form, as well as any kind of compositional elements. The beauty is that in the 3D software, I can model the whole scene, pan the camera around, kind of select what best represents my sketch, and kind of just drop it together. The character is from free software called Daz Studio. I just grabbed a little child um, and put put him in the kneeling, uh, and I actually think I changed it to a female, uh, but I put him in the kneeling position where I'm gonna place like a skull with some flowers and stuff. So you get the nice side of the face, a little bit of the back shot, a typical kind of angle and pose that I generally don't do. So the first thing I generally do is to kind of separate a lot of the major elements. So right at this point, I believe the 
you know, with the sketch and the model, I might be like an hour and a half into the uh, cover. Uh, the first thing I want to do is get rid of that green and start to paint the grassy field. So I kind of put a little bit of a photo layer down there and used a bit of the mixer brush and some of my regular grass brushes to kind of build a base. Uh, again, it's still pretty crude, but we have to start somewhere. Then I basically dumped a bunch of concrete textures right on top of the existing models. Now this is the, I, again, I'm playing with the atmospheric perspective. I want the background to be kind of drab and gray. And yeah, I'm gonna probably touch the character last. But at this point, I really wasn't liking the layouts of the buildings. They felt a little too clumpy and uh, I just didn't like their overall pos positioning. So I re-rendered out a few more buildings, dropped them in to add a bit more of a mid-ground. And so yeah, I'm gonna basically just adding a bit of a layer. It's definitely easier for me to do that at this stage than to go all in at the end and fix this. I, I used a gradient tool on this brush to add in some blue atmosphere to that, adding a little bit more you know, atmospheric perspective to it. And eventually I think I, I raised those buildings up a little bit higher is what I started to do on that layer. So as you can see here, I extended them and did some manual painting, uh, chipping them away. So overall, I took a little bit of color out of that initial uh, pass that I did. Next, what I want to do is a little bit something with exposure that I usually don't. I, I just want to blow out some highlights, make them almost completely white where I want to have a highlight. And so I'm, I'm going to stray from this soft kind of overcast sort of scene and just kind of go with this uh, high, high contrast. So I start grabbing areas of light like I, I do here and blasting it completely out. I start to replace some of the sky uh, that's kind of happening there. And now I start adding some smog and atmosphere coming up from the various parts of the de uh, debris. And so yeah, it's taking a little bit of a life onto itself at this point. Here's more of that layer where I begin to blow out uh, the highlights on a lot of those structural shapes. So basically at this point, the image has all the, the foundation that it really needs. I've you know, almost kind of covered the whole thing with paint. Very little 3D is left. Major problems are uh, resolved. So it re really from here out is a matter of just making everything look a bit more pretty. Um, one major thing here is I lowered that building because I like that original shape that I had that kind of came down like this uh, before everything was just a bit uh, too much on the flat side, like coming across. So I felt that made it slightly more dynamic. I'm working on this nice triangular shape, or maybe it's like a square, to kind of frame the character. Before I was adjusting the lighting, it was all a bit too um, convoluted, I guess. I start adding in some of the smaller details, like the skull there, as the author requested. I put in uh, a little bit of lighting balance and here's where I started to kind of just paint and smooth over lots of the details So see I I end up kind of simplifying that building out in the background further again I spend all this time painting things. I spend just as much time removing them uh, I added a lot more a little bit of lightness into the those background buildings as well at this point I started adding a little bit of overgrowth since it, it could show a longer passage of time. So a lot of cleanup work in this foreground. The grass is still not where I want it, but it's getting there. I'd say for a lot of my paintings, I would leave the grass, but it's gonna be front and center on a book cover. So I do wanna spend the time to clean it up and, and to make it look um, you know, fairly uh, simple and cohesive. So this was like my, one of my final pushes on that. So see, I, the grass is basically broken down into smaller, but very easy uh, to read shapes. So I'm grouping the values a little bit better overall, and I start to add a little bit more flowers uh, back in. And now it's like, okay, I'm fairly comfortable with what a lot of the background is doing. I'm gonna finally get in there and design up some of the character. At this stage, it's getting very close to being complete. Uh, with the character mostly in place now. One last thing that the author did request in an email follow up is that there be like these hovering humanoid figures going across the sky. And so that's kind of what I did there. I just kind of dropped in a little 
you know, Daz's character with the lighting to match the scene, and I kind of have them there, and I'm, I'm blurring them out as they go further back in space. So with that said, he, he does want me to do the, the title text. He said he's not particularly fussy in regards to that. So I added Nexus. I tried to frame the X to have a little bit of a figure uh, back there. And yeah, this basically kind of wrapped it up for the for the most part. And guys, I hope you enjoyed uh, my process on this. I'd like to know what is your your process? Do you tackle things quite a bit differently than I do? Is there some overlap and similarities? I'd certainly be curious to hear what you have to say and how you go about making your book covers. Uh, so thank you for watching and do take care.